I'm Mike Labrash. I'm working on virtual reality at Valve. I um, have been in the computer industry for 33 years now. My first game was sold in 1982. It was called Space Strike and it ran on the IBM PC. I wrote several other games then. In the 90s, I worked at id and I was one of the two programmers on Quake with John Carmack. I also was the graphics lead for Windows NT, the first couple of versions, and I worked on Xbox, and now I'm working at Valve. I would have to say my favorite game of all time is Quake because it was so much fun being a part of making that. My favorite game of any recent time would be Portal 2. I remember playing a video game on some unnamed Radio Shack thing you hooked up to your TV that had six games in it, like Pong. Uh, I don't even know what that system was called. The first real game I remember playing was Breakout. The computer I had was a CPM computer. It had resolution of 160 by 72. And I wrote a Space Invaders for it. And I would say maybe a dozen people ever played it, but boy, it was fun to write that. And when the IBM PC came out, I said to my wife, you know, I bet I could write a game for that and it would sell. So she said, well, okay. And we spent our life savings to buy an IBM PC, which at the time was $6,000. I wrote the game and I sold it to a publisher and my first check showed up for the first quarter and I said, heck, why would I be a graduate student when I can make this much money? Too bad that was the biggest check I ever got. But So at that point I quit being a student and I wrote games full time for a couple of years and then it became clear that the IBM PC game market at that time really wasn't very big and uh, I went on to do some other things, programming things. You know, at that time it, there was no difficult part of entering the industry except doing it. I mean, coming up with the money to buy a computer, that was a challenge. At that point, it was just a miracle if you got anything to work. And so anybody could write a game. All it took was one floppy to ship it on. You could sell it yourself if you wanted. Um, there really weren't barriers in those days. Well, back in the 70s, uh, late 70s, I was a graduate student in energy management and policy. So I had everything but written my dissertation, and then I had this microcomputer, and I had to do some stuff on it for work, and it was way more interesting to write games on it than it was to finish my PhD. So that's what I did previously. The first class I took was a Fortran for Geographers course in 1974, when I was a uh, freshman. Dick Howard had a class and it was, here's how you program in Fortran. And every day, every class, I'd come in and he would have written the assignment on the board and then he'd talk about how you would do the assignment. But I would look at the assignment and I'd spend the class writing the code out in, on paper and then I'd run over and I'd type in the program and it would work. I never listened to what he was actually saying, but that was a lot of fun. And then I took an assembly class that summer and suddenly there was, I remember there was a point at which I realized that this wasn't another language, this was how the computer worked and that was quite a revelation. All the skills I had 10 years ago even, let alone 30, they're really not useful except for how to analyze problems. I mean, in this industry it's like a shark, you just keep moving and so you really do have to keep teaching yourself new things. Until recently I would have said that the most difficult and challenging and interesting one was Quake because so many different things had to be solved simultaneously. Six degree of freedom, um, 3D, internet persistent servers, scripting languages, all that stuff didn't exist yet. I mean, heck, mouse look got invented for Quake. Nobody really knew about any of this. So that was definitely challenging and fascinating. But now I would absolutely say virtual reality. It's solvable, but there are all these different aspects of it that need to be solved. How do you track head position and orientation? How do you draw the stuff so that uh, it doesn't smear and it doesn't strobe? It's uh, quite a fascinating problem. So what's a course or class that you recommend for somebody who's interested in being an engineer in the gaming industry? That I wish I knew, but of course since I came into it so long ago I wouldn't know. The one thing I would say is that it's useful to learn things other than how to program. Um, programming, for people who really belong in this industry in my opinion, is just not that hard. I mean I largely self-taught myself at that time. And uh, what is hard though is knowing how matrix math works well, knowing how to do things like solvers and image processing and such. Having some hard, deep knowledge to go with your programming skills, that's really valuable because there are a lot of problems you can't tackle any other way. The one thing I would say is that a lot of times now people get taught programming at a very abstract level and that's great for doing big projects, um, building things in modular ways so they can be maintained and so forth, but it takes you farther away from how programs actually work when they run. And the key to performance, which is my favorite part of programming, is how programs interact with the hardware. And in order to do some things, you really have to understand that. 
Now, that's more true now than it ever has been for what I'm working on, because in VR, if the hardware doesn't work perfectly with the software, you don't have an experience that you want to have. And so, it turns out that there are specific things you can't do until the hardware enables them to happen. And in order to get the hardware to do the right thing, software people have to participate in the process. I'll give you an example, which is that realistically, Quake, as it came out, could not have existed until the internet was fully in existence and had persistent servers. And so that experience of being able to jump in, play with other people, jump out on servers, just couldn't have existed. And you have to make the hardware exist to have certain things. The way it works at Valve is, if you think there's something that is a really valuable thing to do, you should go and do it and see if you can get other people to do it with you. And that's what I did with virtual reality. And um, it wasn't going, as my previous jobs, it wasn't convincing my manager or up the chain that something was worth doing. It wasn't having someone tell me what was worth doing. It was me thinking about it, doing experiments, saying let's try this, seeing if other people thought it made sense heading down that road. And so it really is a very organic process uh, in which there's a huge amount of individual responsibility.